Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest today is Dr. Sheldon Jordan, Clinical Associate Professor of Neurology at USC and UCLA, and the founder and principal investigator for the Regenesis Project. We'll be back with our interview right after this. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs, you have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place. And they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com. Dot com. That's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. I am so pleased to welcome artist, innovator, and neurological expert, Dr. Sheldon Jordan today. It's so nice to have you on the podcast. Well, welcome. thank you. I'm yes. glad to be here. Of course. We love having you. So you're the founder and principal investigator of the Regenesis Project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so what the Regenesis Project is, is a, um, a group of individuals. We have a, about 10 full-time uh, individuals that are actively engaged in developing uh, cutting-edge uh, applications of new medical advances and taking them from the bench to uh, the bedside. And uh, we, right now we have an excess of 40 different um, research projects going with third-party review. We have uh, several projects where we're uh, working with the FDA to get um, uh, new types of devices and drugs uh, available for patients. And um, I would say our flagship project, if you will, is uh, figuring out a way to um, reset the biological clock of aging and how to uh, take people with various aging related conditions and reverse them by way of uh, returning their biological clock to a younger age. Wow, well I'm sure everyone is interested in that, right? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. So you're giving several lectures at the 29th annual A4M World Congress. Would you mind giving us um, an overview of some of those and some key tips that you are giving to the audience? Yes, well, the first uh, uh, and most important lecture, um, which served as a foundation for the, all the other lectures, um, is a lecture about um, how the biological clock in the hypothalamus of the brain uh, has control over the entire aging process. So what we've learned is that there is a biological clock that determines uh, how you age, and in fact, when you die. And, um, you know, if, if nobody ever died and nobody ever got old, um, there would be too many people around who would be uh, really kind of stressing the ecosystem to a point where no one would survive. So there's probably some survival advantage for the species uh, in terms of having uh, an aging clock and a clock that also determines how you die. But What's really interesting about all this is that the clock can be reprogrammed. So the first lecture is about, first of all, taking the clock apart, seeing what the components are, and seeing how we can reprogram that using things that include nutritional supplements, and eventually uh, using various kinds of delivery mechanisms 
to regenerate that biological clock by uh, giving new genetic instructions to the clock to basically reset it. And that's going to be the future of aging-related medicine. Wow, that's good news, right? <laughs> Um, you're also speaking about Alzheimer's disease being revisited in the post-amyloid era. Can you please also give a preview of this topic? Of course. So uh, very recently, uh, the FDA has given approval for a drug that is designed to get rid of amyloid. And uh, it was very effective in terms of getting rid of the amyloid. It was not highly successful as an individual uh, drug and an an individual factor in terms of reversing the clinical appearance of Alzheimer's disease. Um, they looked at people at very early stages. Um, they, they had a relatively short observation period. They did not see big changes uh, in their cognition as a result of the therapy, although it was extremely effective in getting rid of the amyloid plaques. These protein deposits that are thought to be inflammatory and are thought to break apart the synaptic connections that make us who we are. And uh, so uh, the, the question is, now that we have this drug, how do we use it? Um, what are the implications? Uh, is it maybe the start of a whole new era where we can think about taking Alzheimer's disease and really treating it and reversing it? And perhaps this is just the beginning, that this is one element that we can use in our armamentarium but we have to think of all the other factors, nutrition, uh, toxic exposure, uh, exercise, controlling the vascular system, uh, making sure your diet is, is appropriate. So I was looking not just at this new drug that's been approved, but all the other things that we can do to make this part of a program where people can really uh, show some uh, reversal of a condition that looks like Alzheimer's disease. Oh, that's truly life-changing. We hope it to be. <laughs> of course. You did mention diet and exercise, of course, are definitely key tips that you give your patients. Are there any other basic tips that you share with them? Well, first of all, um, to the extent that there may be a uh, fall off in your immune system, I think that's extremely important. So uh, part of the, the biological clock and part of the whole um, process of aging has to do with the fact that our immune systems uh, wear out by the time we're 20 years old, I hate to say. And as we age, we have less and less of that immune system. And what happens over the course of time is there are various kinds of bugs that are relatively dormant, um, and they're kind of hiding in your body, in including even in your brain. Mm -hmm. We used to think that the brain was a place that was sterile, that there were no bugs there. But actually, there are resident bugs. We call it the biome. So every, every organ in the body, including the brain, has a resident microbiome that is normally held in check by your immune system. But as you become older, your immune system starts to weaken. And these various organisms that have been hiding out mm -hmm. for most of your life start to come out. And they start to cause inflammation. And the inflammation starts to tear apart all those connections in your brain that are re relevant for making who you are and how you are as a special individual, the connections start to break apart because the inflammation starts to grow as your immune system weakens. Mm -hmm. So a very big part of my program is thinking about ways of improving your immune system, whether that requires uh, various kinds of supplements that come from, let's say, thymus extracts, mm -hmm. um, whether it's actually uh, using melatonin appropriately. So people are using melatonin for helping them sleep, mm -hmm. but it also has an effect on your immune system. Oh, well, that's interesting. We look at the various bugs that live in your mouth, your nose, your gut, mm -hmm. and normally there are healthy bacteria that should be there. But as you get older, you may have these more dangerous bugs that kind of creep in. We, we use the term dysbiosis. So rather than having good bacteria that support your body, we start getting bad bacteria and fungi and yeasts and various kinds of organisms that also add to this inflammatory process. So a, a, a good part of what we do is trying to make sure that we have a normal 
healthy balance of microbes living in our body to the extent that there may be dangerous ones. We may need to use antibiotics. We may have to change our diet. We may have to even use probiotics and prebiotics to try to restore a healthier mix of bacteria and yeasts and, and various kinds of microbes. And um, in some cases, we even have to supplement with various kinds of um, agents like butyrate, which is made by good bacteria that stops the leakiness of the gut and stops the leakiness of toxins getting into the brain. So this is where some supplementation may be necessary for a given individual. Okay, and what is, what is butyrate? So butyrate is a, um, a molecule which is made by good bacteria living in your gut. Okay. And if you don't have the correct bacteria living there, you no longer have butyrate. And butyrate is necessary to keep the barrier between the gut and the rest of the body sealed off so there isn't a leakage of toxins that go from the gut into your body. Mm -hmm. And likewise, there's a blood-brain barrier. So that protects the brain from toxins seeping in to the brain. You need butyrate also at that level. So what makes a bacteria a good bacteria? Mm -hmm. One of the things they do is they make these substances that maintain the integrity of our body. And if you don't have that very bacteria available mm -hmm. to make these substances, we can, we can try to supplement it. That would be one strategy that would okay. be personalized. Well, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing all that knowledge with us. Sure. I do have one more question for you. Of course. Um, I, you have so many accomplishments already, but if you could choose one thing that you'd like to be known for, what would that one thing be? Taking on the challenge of aging in a way where people become less capable and turning that around so as people age, they have all the functionality that makes them creative and happy and productive as long as they can possibly reach that level of functioning. That's what I want to be uh, known for is working on the biological clock, uh, turning around the aging process, not so much for longevity, but for making people's lives more productive and creative. That's something that I uh, love to be a part of and that's what drives me in my practice and in my research. That sounds wonderful. Great answer. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Glad <laughs> to be you. here. And I'm glad to help out with A4M. <laughs>